Okay, I wanted to start out with a Malcolm X quote for the events that just happened today, July 26, 2012, uh, in uh, Louisville City Council. So Malcolm X says, I believe that there will ultimately be a clash between the oppressed and those doing the oppressing. I believe that there will be a, a clash between those who want freedom, justice, and equality for everybody and those who want to continue the system of exploitation. I believe that there will be a, that kind of clash, but I don't think that it will be based on the color of the skin. Malcolm X, his main message was the oppressed versus the oppressor. A hierarchical relationship. So, um, so yeah, recently you had uh, Louisville Metro City Council which was spearheaded by Mayor Fisher, vote on a camping ban. So, because the Occupy group was saying that the public spaces are ours, we the people's, uh, and there wasn't any laws on the books because we got the First Amendment on our side, Mayor Fisher was put into a, a, a bind where he had to accept Occupy Louisville uh, being out on these lawns for many months. And to be honest, when it first started, I thought he was doing it well by not being such a reactionist. He was allowing it to, you know, dwindle on its own. He wasn't trying to spur the movement. Uh, but now he is actively is passing legislation to stop the gains of Occupy Louisville. So the, to understand what he's actually doing, you have to understand what Occupy is. It's, first of all, it's a worldwide revolution, and secondly... It's uh, uh, a protest against economic inequality. So when you vote against a camping ban, the 10,000 homeless people, since we got Fishervilles all over the place, just like Hoovervilles in the, during the Great Depression era, you got Fishervilles, you've got tent cities in Louisville. We have so many homeless people and not enough homeless shelters that they're choosing to, instead to live out in the woods. They're living out... Uh, uh, underneath bridges, they're living out in isolated uh, spaces that they don't think anybody would be able to get to them. That's what we offer here in Louisville to somebody who does not have a home. Meanwhile, we got 22 houses, 22 empty houses per every one homeless person. 22 empty houses for every one homeless person. And that's not just the only economic inequality. Recently, you had uh, Kentucky statistics just came out. That said, one in four of uh, Kentucky's children are living in poverty. One out of four, 25 percent, which is a number I've heard a long time. The recent report that came out, the latest Kids Count report, which was released by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, says that one out of five Kentucky children are in poverty. So poverty is an issue. Homelessness, working class issues, poverty, these are all lumped the same things. We're all the 99 percent, the 1 percent get away with everything, such as Greg Fisher's uh, butt buddy, his uh, John Y. Brown Jr., who, you know, is a multi-billionaire, who's extraordinarily rich, was able to use the position of governorship here in Kentucky in order to get himself head of the KFC, KFC Corporation and make millions of dollars on it. Also, John Y. Brown Jr. was the governor implicated in the Drew Thornton case where he jumped out with $15 million of cocaine strapped on his back and $75 million of cocaine spread throughout the Georgian and Tennessee forest. That's John Y. Brown Jr. And Greg Fisher was John Y. Brown Jr.'s um, know, his, uh, secretary of something, <laughs> secretary of the cabinet of Kentucky. So Greg Fisher comes out of John Y. Brown Jr.'s corrupt clique, the aristocracy out of uh, Lexington. That's where Drew Thornton came out of. So he's uh, heavily embedded in the aristocracy. So today's vote, July 26, 2012. It was 23 to 0. So unanimous vote, City Council, Louisville City Council unanimously voted to ban camping. So if you're a homeless person living in one of these Fishervilles, one of these Mayor Greg Fishervilles, uh, which is the only spots, he, he doesn't open any of these condemned buildings up. He doesn't open up any of these evicted houses. He doesn't make sure that the banks don't get one over on working class people and throw them out on the streets. No, his priorities is to make sure that people are not allowed to protest throughout the night. 
You're allowed to protest, he says, but just during the day. So as long as our First Amendment rights are limited, that's what he cares about doing. He doesn't care about the economic inequality, nor does Louisville Metro, but they do care about uh, making sure that people who are already homeless are now going to be arrested because of uh, because of that homelessness. It also opens the door up for people to uh, be arbitrary, uh, arbitrarily arrested, so protesters will arbitrarily be arrested. Homeless people, young people traveling through town with backpacks, those people will now be targets. If you sleep on an area that is smaller than three acres, public area that is smaller than three acres. So unless you find Daniel Boone's National Forest, unless you find a national parks or a city park that is larger than three acres, you will be arrested if you think that you're going to lay on the, the grass on the lawn and take a nap. So 23 to 0, Louisville Metro Council voted today. David Yates, who is my representative, but not really. Uh, he's, uh, he's, for, he's corporate, so he's on the board of trustees uh, for U of L. He's jacked the tuition up. He doesn't care. He just wants to keep jacking our tuition up. Um, he's, uh, also, the, the tuition was going off with U of L's elitist Greek rich kid clubs, which we all know about uh, how the SGA rich kids are at U of L. They, they only care about themselves. They care less about working class peoples. There's very little hope of our fu future political generation being any different than any of these manipulative Republican or these corporate Democrats such as Mayor Fisher. There's, I don't see any real Democrats out there. Attica Scott is generally voted or uh, spoke highly of, but she was absent today, so she, didn't, she wasn't even there to vote. Uh, some of the stronger supporters, you have Madonna Flood, Rick Blackwell, Mary Woodridge, and Tina Ward. Uh, Tina Ward, who are all voted against Occupy. This isn't just a camping ban. This is a camping ban against Occupy. Mayor Fisher, we got under his skin. We had the National Lawyers Guild. We were able to flex our rights and extend the protests October, November, uh, December, January, February, March, April. For like six, seven months, we were able to do it. And uh, evidently, he didn't like that. Um, and, and most of the folks were homeless folks, you know. If you ha solved the homeless situation here in Louisville, if the homeless situation was solved, Occupy wouldn't have been able to continue as long as it had. Uh, but somebody had to bear the cold, and 99% of those who were occupying during the winter time were the homeless, and that should never be forgotten. So, again, Madonna Flood, Rick Blackwell, Mary Woodridge, and Tina Ward. Madonna Flood. Rick Blackwell, Mary Woodridge, Tina Ward, Madonna Flood, Rick Blackwell, Mary Woodridge, Tina Ward. They all voted against Occupy, and they said that uh, uh, Tina Ward said that freedom of speech shouldn't be absolute. So whose streets are they? Is it 99 percent? Is it we the people? Or is it the one percent? Um, yeah. So evidently. It's the 1%. It's not public spaces. It's not the, the, the public park is not we the people's just because we pay the taxes, which I had suspected uh, beforehand. But to actually know about it, it's, it's kind of rough to actually know about it, you know, to, to know that the, the system is corrupt. So, yeah, that's some, that's some bullshit. That's such bullshit. Mayor Fisher is going to declare war on the 99%. That's what he's going to do. I wonder if any of those folks that I just mentioned have anybody running against them. Madonna Flood, Rick Blackwell, Mary Woodridge, or Tina Ward. Yeah, fuck all you all. Fuck Mayor Fisher. Fuck the corporations. Fuck fascism. Uh, but specifically, fuck Louisville Mayor, uh, Louisville Metro City Council. Fuck this government that's running Louisville. They, they aren't, uh, they ain't fighting for us. And they're corrupt as shit. They're professional corruptionists. They care about their big corporate donors, but they don't care a damn about we the people. And, you know, what is Occupy, right? Well, Occupy is a lot of things. Um, it's an international protest movement against social and economic inequality. Its primary goal is being to make the economic structure and the power relations in society fairer. There are different local groups which have different foci, but among the prime concerns is the claim that large corporations and the global financial system control the world in a way that disproportionately benefits a minority, undermines democracy, and is unstable. Occupy Wall Street was initiated by the Canadian group Adbusters 
partly inspired by the Arab Spring, uh, especially Cairo's Tahir Square movements, uh, protest, and the Spanish indignance. So Spain had a bunch of protests that was going on. The movement commonly uses the slogan, we are 99%, the uh, hashtag Occupy format, and organize it through websites such as Occupy together. So according to the Washington Post, the movement, which has been described as a democratic awakening by Cornell West, is difficult to distill in a few demands. In fact, in a teaser poster for the beginning of Occupy Wall Street, the tagline is, what is our one demand? On October 12, 2011, the Los Angeles City Council became one of the first governmental bodies uh, in the United States to adopt a resolution stating its informal support of the Occupy movement. So, Los Angeles, the city council in one of the major cities in America, have voiced their informal support. So, it wasn't, they didn't give them money, they didn't say, you know, uh, make a law directly for them, but they did write up a resolution and they voted on saying that they informally support the, the movement. They support the Occupy protest. And why wouldn't they? The revolution, uh, based on economics, that's working class people, the 99%, you're going to have a hard time fighting up against the 99%. That 99%, so you're just only for just 1% of us, right? Just the ultra wealthy, ultra wealthy like the Cordish companies, the Cordish companies are allowed to buy Founder Square, right? Since Mayor Fisher and Louisville Metro, they sold Founder Square, which was the second spot that Occupy went to for one dollar to quarters companies for one dollar a year one dollar one dollar a year was spent by the quarters companies in order to get founder square do you give a fuck about the public or the people or the homeless or working class and the unions or do you only give a shit about the quarters companies and force street live and the uh, king cole and big corporations mayor fisher louisville city council louisville metro so the Occupy movement is, um, you know, going across Europe. It's going all across the world. Uh, there's a lot of protests that's being coordinated along with Occupy. So even if it's not Occupy across the world, there are lots of uh, political unrest throughout the entire world. Occupy Edinburgh. So not only did you have L.A. City Council who voted to informally support the Occupy group. You also had Occupy Edinburgh, and it was a peaceful protest and demonstration against the moneyed corruption of our democracy. Um, this occupation uh, was uh, was formed on October 15, 2011, to support the aims of the Occupy movement initiated by the Ad Busters and the Occupy Wall Street protest of September 17, 2011. Movement focused on corporate greed, centered around the 2008 UK government bailout. So many of the same issues they're fighting for. November 24th. 2011, Edinburgh City Council became the first government body in the world to grant both the Occupy Edinburgh and the worldwide Occupy movement official recognition. They officially recognized the Occupy movement. That's the Edinburgh City Council in Scotland. Edinburgh City Council. So L.A. Uh, informally voted for it. Edinburgh City Council has given it official recognition, not just Occupy Edinburgh, but the Occupy movement all across the world. So that, that's a major development. When you have some cities who are embracing the 99% and you have other cities that are uh, uh, pushing the protesters and pushing the people who actually want to Here see a difference and make things. On the XTV .TV website. What is this? University what is this? I'm not trying to hear you. <laughs> um, so uh, Occupy Edinburgh was able to get official recognition and when they got official recognition they're able to get uh, recognition for all the Occupy groups all across the world. All the city council's elected members accepting the conservative group got behind the amended motion put forward by green councilors, which called for the recognition and endorsement of Occupy movements worldwide. The original motion, worded by green councilor Maggie Chapman, went further by requesting of the council supports the participants of the St. Andrew's Square occupation and demanding that these values be recognized and acted upon by all government bodies in the UK and worldwide. Commits to return our democracy to the people and to work together immediately to create a new sustainable and equitable Scotland. So, Occupy Edinburgh officially gains recognition. LA gives Occupy informal recognition and Louisville Metro Council today, July 26, 2012, voted against Occupy, against the 99%. And they will pay for it. 
They will pay for it at the ballot box. You will not get reelected. Louisville Mayor, uh, Louisville Metro City Council, we're watching you, and you ain't voting in solidarity. It's time for a change. Occupy.